self-awareness is one of the number one things that really lead into healthy communication and advocating for yourself and really bringing yourself into the present moment. So the window of tolerance, when you start really focusing on your behavior as responses to what's going on around you, and you really slow down your process of life. So you slow down your thought process, you slow down your reaction time, you slow down what you're thinking about in your brain, and you really get present into your body. It allows you to really focus on how you're feeling. And so for me, I struggle with the fight or flight responses. I get into hyper arousal more than I ever get into hypo arousal. So that hyper arousal is that incontrollable anger, that incontrollable like frustration. It's just like blowing up. You get very explosive. And that's something that I struggle with. So I'm working on being so present in my body that I can feel when I'm feeling tension in my chest. I can feel when my hands and my jaw are getting tight and I'm starting to get frustrated. And one thing my therapist said this last week that I really, really appreciated was that when you're trying to turn things around and you're trying to ch change your behaviors or your thought patterns, or you're trying to change how you react to certain things, you have to keep going. You have to keep showing up and you have to keep doing the work over and over and over again. And there are points when you get so exhausted and so frustrated because it just keeps happening. You just keep getting in that small little window of tolerance where everything feels like it's irritating. Everything feels like it's overwhelming. To be in a room with 10 people talking at the same time for me is just, oh, it sends me into hyper arousal and I have to like remove myself because it's so hard to stand in the room with 10 people talking. Whereas, you know, someone who grew up in a safe environment, in a safe home, that's a party, that's fun for them. And I think that's great for them. But for me, I know myself now that I have to place those boundaries and say, I have to excuse myself for a few minutes to remind myself that I'm safe. I have to excuse myself from certain places to bring myself back into my window of tolerance and I have to ease my way back in if I plan on going back into the conversation or back into the room. And if I can't, I just say, you know, I'm really sorry. I can't stay today. I have to go. And I don't give any excuses. I don't get any, give any reasons. I just respect that I am taking care of myself in the need for that window of tolerance to be safe. And the more you practice that, the more that you show up and, and really understand yourself and where your window of tolerance is, the bigger your window of tolerance will grow. And it happens over time. It comes with practice. Once you really set in the practice, once you really get into the habit of continually taking care of yourself, continually creating safe environments for yourself, and knowing that it's okay if something sets you off. It's okay if something freezes you for a moment. It's okay that you're scared. It's okay that you're angry. You just have to find ways about bringing yourself back into the safe space because that safe space is what is going to grow you. That safe space is what's going to allow you to breathe through the moments. Because for me, honestly, like every time I have experienced a trigger, it has been hell coming back into my window of tolerance because my window of tolerance was so small. CPTSD is something where, again, you've experienced abuse over a really long period of time that it's really hard to get that window to grow. It's really hard to get that space to, to uh, expand. It's hard to trust people. It's hard to know who's being honest with you. It's hard to know if you can trust yourself in your own decisions. And so once that window of tolerance really starts to grow, you start recognizing safe people around you. They'll let you know that you're safe. They'll let you know that it's okay that you feel the way you feel about things. They will validate your experience. They will validate why it's okay to go through the things that you're going through. And you'll just know that you're, that you're safe. And that feels really good. Sometimes we people please and it sends us right out of our window of tolerance. So we think that it's probably best that we take care of this other person or that we say yes because we're afraid of the repercussions of saying no. But honestly, the repercussions of saying yes are worse than the repercussions of saying no. Because if you can stay in your window of tolerance, 
you are taking care of yourself. And that's the most important thing that you can do. It's the best thing you can offer to the people around you is being someone who is safe and calm and within a reasonable um, level of healthy communication. And that comes from being inside of that window of tolerance. I want to be a spark to change, to change how domestic violence is looked at, sexual assault is looked at. Um, I want to let people know there is help there, they are not alone, and never to give up. Never, ever, ever to give up. It, it, sometimes our, our families we can't talk to because we're, we're connected with them, and they're emotionally connected with us. And that was one of my biggest things is that I didn't realize, okay, my family can't really help me. I needed a professional. And I needed other women who went through this. So a spark to change for me means that our community, there are people in our community like the center, the, the center is it for me, but that will help us, that will guide us and, um, and make a change. So it, I was embarrassed and shameful to tell my story that I was being abused. And no one should be ashamed or feel like it's their, you know, that they did something wrong. Abuse is abuse. Thank you for watching and listening to New Attitude TV. Please share our mental health podcast with your friends and family.